Oh, hello. Uh, welcome back to another session of Electronic Assisted Astronomy with an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. My name's Pete and we're observing from the Isle of Wight as normal. Uh, it's a bit of a warm day today and it's still warm tonight. It's uh, 21 degrees Celsius outside on the decking and the sensor temperature is currently 23.5 degrees Celsius. Um, so we started observing uh, Sharpless 254 uh, which is down in the Milky Way near um, the Omega and the Eagle Nebula. In fact, it's roughly the same distance, 7,000 light years. And we've been imaging for uh, six minutes and 24 seconds. And we're zoomed in here at 100%. So we can see this lovely um, nebulosity with these dark lanes going through it and the little star cluster running through as well. In fact, if I zoom out, um, you'll see that there's a whole region here of uh, gas, hydrogen, all in this kind of neck of the woods where um, the Eagle and Omega Nebula are as well. Um, all of these places where stars are created in our galaxy. So it's looking quite nice. I haven't actually observed this object before. Uh, mainly, um, well, because there's all the big well-known objects around it, and so you kind of miss this one. And if I look on um, Stellarium, which we're running here, this is the latest beta of Stellarium. I think it came out the 2nd of September, yeah, a couple of days ago. Um, and the default catalogs, when they're set up, is it shows nothing in this, this region. So if I um, turn on all the catalogs, there is SH2254, um, but no picture of it. But obviously we can we can re remedy that by bringing up, say, the HIP survey, which is showing what we can see here with that little cluster and all the dark survey. Or maybe if we don't want to use HIPS, I think the um, the survey I've selected for HIPS is pan stars, but uh, we do the deep sky so yeah and see that shows all this whole region covered in nebulosity with dark nebula running through it well the same nebula but obviously casting a shadow stopping light from stars behind them reaching us so that's quite nice i'm gonna go back to the hips one uh, the pan stars one which doesn't quite show the nebulosity you can still see it roughly but it's um i quite like that it's a very pretty thing and that's a fantastic thing for um stellarium in that you can switch between those catalogs so even if there isn't an image of um that particular object, then you know you can get one from the deep sky survey. Uh, the moon tonight, right? So the moon has risen. It's two point three degrees. Uh, it's way down in the east. Um, it's seventy one point one percent right now, so it's quite bright. Uh, so, but you know this is EAA, so we're just going to observe whether it's um, full or or dark. Obviously, we're going to see better images in dark, especially for faint images like this. So this is quite a bright, a bright nebula. But um, yeah, we're just going to carry on regardless. So seven thousand light years. Um, so that's been building for eight minutes. I wanted to build it a little bit more um, because we, then we can start playing with some of the tools in SharpCat to see if we can improve that image a bit. Um, I did take a drastic step and that is that I decided to clean my telescope. Now it wouldn't fit in the dishwashers so I had to clean it manually. Sorry. Um, no, so the problem has been that for the past few years, um, quite a few years actually, um, the inside of my corrector plate or the inside of my telescope, so I thought, was growing stuff. I don't know whether it was bacteria or mold but something had fallen down onto the inner surface of the corrector plate and was happily made a home there which was nice but it was getting worse and worse in fact let me show you a picture of it here we go and this was my telescope um, so all these little bits here and this hair hair were all on the inside and when i looked through it the, the mirror looked dull in fact like i thought the mirror was covered in rubbish as well so I watched a few videos on YouTube, as, as you would, and um, decided to take the plunge. A um, little bit scary, but luckily the videos online showed me how, how to do it. Um, so I took this all off um, 
also making sure that I lined it, I had tape so I could align it back in again, clean the inside with all the prescribed methods, the cotton wool buds and the deionized water and all that kind of malarkey. You can see it all online, I'm not going to go, go through it. And um, this, which was, oh, it was layers. So w w when I took it off, I was really pleased because actually the mirror, uh, the secondary mirror and the primary mirror were pristine. It was the corrector plate that was filthy. Um, so I cleaned it and I got this, which is slightly better. Um, I have no idea if that really improves it. I couldn't tell. I mean, I was kind of with trepidation. I took it out that night, which I, I just the same night, the same day I cleaned it. And um, I hadn't broken the scope. I thought maybe, oh no, it's going to be completely out of alignment. And actually, um, no, it wasn't. It was it was right where it where it was before, or as as close as I th thought it was. Um, so I was very happy with that. Um, I have to say that's the first time it's been cleaned in 14 and a half years, and it really needed it. And I think what happened, I put it in the loft once because the power board went inside it. And before I sent it off, in fact, it was a couple of years, life gets in the way, you know how it is. And I left it in there. And when I went to get it out, I noticed that the cap I put on, that comes to the rubber cap, if you have a Celestron, uh, SCT, you'll know that, um, had fallen off or had been knocked off, maybe. Um, and I think at that time something got into it, and that was years ago. And over the years it has grown and grown, so I took the plunge. And hopefully I won't have to clean it for another um, 14 uh, and a half years. Um, but it was it's much better, and it's the, the mirror gleams now where before it was quite dull. So we're at 10 minutes 30, 32 seconds. Um, let's see if we change the slope a little bit. I'm not sure if that's going to bring it out much more, but there's the lovely lanes and things that we have in it. Let's go out and see the full Monty. We've still got the lovely nebulosity with some dark patches here. I think this one would take a little bit more time and uh, to be honest, now I've come to it and seen it, it's very um, Triffid Nebula light, but not as bright, I don't think. Actually, the Triffid Nebula is quite close. Is it just down below, I think, isn't it? Where's the Triffid Nebula? Um, oh, yeah, Hips isn't very good at showing that. Oh, no, the Triffid Nebula's way down, isn't it? Sorry, I was just being uh, silly. It's down. Is that down here somewhere? I think it's down here somewhere. Uh, let me just sink the planetarium back to that. There we go. Um, so there you go, Sharpless 254, 7,000 light years away, something maybe to look up if you're in this region during the summer, it's just a rich, lovely region. So um, let's let's log that, SharpCap command area, alright, let's log it again. That was a try-catch thing there. Observation, Observation 2-54 created. Ah, 254 created. Fantastic. And there, there it is. Observation 2-54 created. Oh no, it did it twice, because I pressed it twice, didn't I? But don't worry. So if I go into observations, let's take a quick look at what we've got here. Uh, I've got two now, um, so the best thing to do would just be to delete that selected observation. And I've only got one now. Um, so I've updated this a bit more, so we go here on the attachments. Everything's working there and general. Oh, I wonder if object fields are there now. Oh, not there yet. Right. Observation notes. I've added into the notes now that it gives me some more information in the notes every time I add a, a, an object. So that's great. Uh, so that's done. And I was double clicking quite happily there. Uh, let's move on. Ah, oh, yes. Now this might be two objects in the same view. So this is NGC 6712, which is a globular cluster, and uh, IC1295, which is a planetary nebula. So let's go and see if we can, ooh, going attacked by a fly. Uh, let's target that. Telescope doing nine degrees. Oh, just nine degrees. So we're, as I said, we're using the latest beta of um, Sharp, what's it, let's be I think completed. it's nearly um, done. Oh, there's the globular cluster there. So um, let me just sink the planetarium. 
So this is the globular cluster, and over here is IC1295. So there's the globular cluster, and over here is IC1295, which is a uh, faint planetary nebula. So we will endeavor to... Oh, wrong one. So if we bring our globular cluster up here, I think that's pretty well should bring... Okay, let's capture that. Now we're using um, eight second subs. I did the darks before um, I started the session because it was so warm. I do have ones which were close, but I wanted to get uh, a little bit closer to that. So there's our globular cluster, and straight away there over there is IC1295. So we have two objects with the price of one. A lovely globular cluster, which is 22,507 light years away, and IC1295, which I've got no idea how far away it is, but I doubt it's 22,000 light years away. Um, oh. still not getting okay now we did have a problem like this before but that problem was fixed by Robin so it's got no alignment stars um, we try capturing a slightly lower a lower exposure yeah that's what I thought Let's see at four seconds if we can actually, I can still see it. So I see one, two, nine, five. I don't happen there. So remember if you were with me last time, we had this problem where um, it, every time it, you went to an object and started capturing, it would always lose the first one. And then from that moment on, it said that there weren't enough stars to align on. And we got to the bottom of that. It was actually this frame rate limit. So Robin had uh, changed the code between RC2 and RC3 of SharpCap and because I had that set to something, um, it was interfering, uh, basically, with, with what was meant to happen. Um, so I think Robin changed some of his code, but I just, and I changed that to maximum because there was no reason why it wasn't anything but maximum. I think I misunderstood what it was doing. It was my fault, really. Um, but there you go. So let's um, correct the color. Okay, and let's... Um, that to a two. So we've got a lovely globular cluster here, um, NGC 6712. Um, it says high concentration of stars towards the center, and it's absolutely true. It is. What I might do with this is put the unsharp mask on as well. That's better. Um, always good to use the enhancements as well. Now, I'm not sure why it doesn't work when I went to eight seconds, unless um, my mount is moving too much at that particular time. So we might want to go to eight seconds in a minute, but we're, we'll keep at four seconds. So I think what we'll do um, is we'll come back to this when we get to about five minutes. Oh, hello, um, welcome back. That was a bit longer than I thought. Um, so we're at eight minutes and 56 seconds. So what happens, I went back and I changed it to the eight second um, uh, sub, which uh, I wanted it to be at. Um, and it kept on doing that, I can't find enough alignment stars. So I went into the alignment tab on, on SharpCap and changed my sensitivity to 80 and that seemed to make it work. Um, I mean, this is a really rich field. I mean, there's tons of stars. One thing I want to say is I don't think my flat's working anymore. But anyway, let's um, let's zoom in a bit. So here we have our globular cluster, uh, 
and then if we scroll across to the edge of the screen over here we have this blue ring this blue ring which is our planetary nebula and we've already uh, logged that so I think what we do now is um, let's go let's go to a dark nebula let's go and see a dark nebula hold on I'm going to think about that for a second let's target that Telescope is slewing 4 degrees. Slewing completed. Right, let's do a plate solve on that because we're not quite sure where it is because it's dark. And let's sink the planetarium. So we should have a nice line of dark nebula. We should have two stars there over here. Those are the two stars that are there. So we should have a dark nebula that's kind of roughly here. Let's use uh, the eight seconds again and hopefully hopefully we won't see the same problem that we saw just now. So let's capture that and see what we get. Think there's a problem but anyway we're, we're looking at that but straight away can we see that there seems to be this dark patch right in the middle which is this patch here uh, this is Barnard 103 and there's the Dark Nebula 498, 499, 495 um, but there's just definitely this dark zone that's running through our image here maybe down here as well Let's um, color balance it quickly. Uh huh. And let's bring up the stretch the image. And straight away we can see that there is this dark area extending down here. So that's um, that Lynn's Dark Nebula 495 going down this way. This one's there that's still B103 there's another one here oh another one over here somewhere if we use if we go down to one change our shape of our line does that give a better oh it does so there we go we're seeing a dark nebula um, Barnard Barnard 103 whole amount of dust and gas that's obscuring the stars of the galaxy behind it I think that's just a... those two stars are those two stars there yeah what's our brightness doing Just pull back out slightly. Yeah, that's definitely. There we go, Dark Nebula. B103. Observing something you can't actually see because it's black. Well, a lack of light anyway. Let's see if that gets better. Why are we doing that? Um, Last night I went to M27 again and I recorded, um, I was 
doing a little project with a variable star which I've started and um, I was recording the brightness over the period from I think it was from the beginning of end of June until till now it's um, V571 in, in Bob Peculiar which is a variable star that is about what was it 17,000 light years away behind um, M27 and it's a, a Myra type um, and if you've seen it before. So all I've been doing is recording the image. I've been using ASTAP. Um, if you look at the, my previous video, um, I was using ASTAP to find the magnitude. Now, obviously, it's not calibrated anyway, so we're just looking at a trend, and that's what we're looking at. So as you see, it, it appears that the star peaked around this period, and then it's now uh, declining in brightness, which I think it means it's swelling up. As a red giant, it's swelling up, and so the, the brightness is decreasing because there's the same light over the, a larger area and the uh, last night it was 16.9 um, at 2148 UTC um, and this is just a uh, a best match line through so it looks like we're we are we've seen it at maximum and it's coming all the way down again and based on the maximum I think then it's predicted to be around about the 4th of November that it will reach a uh, minimum, which is magnitude 17.5. Um, um, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, I looked at that the last night and um, yeah, it still seems to be following a path, uh, a path downwards in, in brightness. In fact, it was a lot dimmer, um, noticeably so. Um, so we'll carry on with that little project. Subana B103. Again, if you didn't have um, hips on and we didn't put uh, all the catalogs on, you can see even th even with this, with just with the stars being blacked out, that it's there, but you'd kind of miss it. So this is what's great. And I'll just turn on the other catalogs. Um, there you go. I mean, all my button does is what you can do here. So if I go to the side and I go into the viewing options and go to DSO it's just changing this you can actually do it yourself you can do you know all of them or none of them or select the ones you want and then store it as a preference and then select the preference but rather than keep on coming in here and, and doing that I just do it via um, uh, calls to the uh, remote control into a uh, plugin that's in here Well, that's 4 minutes 32. For some reason I'd like to do even 5 minutes. It's just me I suppose. But it's great. I mean this time of year where the, the, the galaxy is down in the southern sky. Rich clusters and large gases. Or, sorry, <laughs> clouds of gases, hydrogen and so on. I mean, just like SH 254, we looked at in the Mission Nebula, and now this is one HD region, well, it's the Mission Nebula. And then um, Barnard 103, a dark nebula, 456. We'll do one more. Oh, we failed. We keep on failing. Let's look at the brightness again. Let's look at the log. So the frame brightness was too low. I don't know. I'm going to log it. Observation And there we go. So that's our dark nebula. Uh, let's go on to something a little bit more... Well, it's not grander, but a bigger globular cluster in M14. So uh, let's shoot off to M14. Telescope viewing 16 degrees. So here we go, this is M14, it's right here, um, I won't bother to do a plate solve, i just move it up. And then I'll move it across a bit so it's more central. Let's do it. Capture mode 2, let's, um, let's capture it. So we're using 8 second subs, 
and uh, we're using darks and flats that I just said a minute ago. Our flat didn't seem to be right, I don't know why. Um, it was working perfectly well last night. So there's a lovely cluster M14, 30,336 light years away, so it's further away than um, uh, NGC 6712 that we looked at a minute ago. Morphicus. Let's just adjust the colour. Yeah, I'm not sure that's what anyone had wanted to do, but we're, we'll wait for a few more frames. And I think our enhancement now, we're going to stick on the unshut mask. Which does bring out the noise, but I've got the bilateral filter uh, for noise on as well. Oh, satellite, nice. And we haven't, I don't think we've done enough frames for signal clipping to get it. And I haven't got satellite um, remove tracks on either. So, I really need to sort that out, but because there are so many satellites these days. Oh, if you can hear that, that's my dog. He's got a bit of an itchy nose. His favorite thing about astronomy is that if the doors open, he can rush down the garden and see if he can find an a cat or such, such such things lurking down there but the cats are quite fast and they know he lives here so um, and they look out for him so a nice central core with all of these streamers coming out as normal um, let's try again with the colour What I'm going to do is um, let's try and bring the make the green a little peak, kind of roughly the same on both sides. Then let's just bring the red down. onto that peak and let's bring the blue down onto the peak. Now there was a video I watched many years many years ago. God, they've been doing it three and a half years. Um, few years ago which said don't an altitude on that 30 degrees oh, 30 degrees um, leave the green where it was and then bring the red and green to it but I sometimes notice I don't know, it's just my camera that by doing this try and make a nice even um, try and make a nice even peak that helps as well. Should we bring it up a little bit more? It would be nice to see what which satellite it was. In um, in Stellarium, you can load up satellites, and also in um, the sky as well. And I, I did do a test um, it was last year or something where I had Stellarium up and I purposefully placed the view so I could see a, where it went through and it was very accurate. Um, the timings on these computers are linked to a device behind me. In fact, there's a GPS, you might see a red flash, that's the pulse per second line going to my Raspberry Pi that's down um, over here. Um, so all the so basically that's a, that's a stratum one time server and everything gets its time linked off that so everything is pretty well synced to um, atomic time which obviously the atomic clocks are inside the, the, the GPS satellites um, and corrected from the ground and so on.
Well, I didn't want to do a too long one today because um, I was doing some programming as well today because of the new Astro Planner Beta came out early in the morning, actually, about two in the morning uh, yesterday. It had some features in it allow me to use for um, adding to the observing uh, information um, via the scripting model that wasn't available before. So um, Paul kindly added in a couple of features that um, allows me to kind of do what he does when he adds a, when I press add observation within the tool, um, he adds a few object fields, which have got lots of information into them, They're actually about 60 odd. Um, I'm not going to add that many, but um, a few I will. So I was doing that. Um, And to be honest, I'm just going to try a few other things tonight. Go and see some of my favourite objects. But I think for now, at 4 minutes 32 with M14, forming up nicely, along with its accompanying satellite trail, I, th I think we'll say that's great. Um, thank you very much for, for, for joining. And uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. Have fun. <laughs>